Christmas tree in the greenwood, it was the holly. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Terry McDade and the McDades. Center for the Arts, and uh, has yet to be released or recorded on anything, but uh, it's a fun tune to play. And um, it has no title yet, so we call it the B-flat tune, because it's, uh, it's in the key of G. No, I'm kidding, it's B-flat. Right? <laughs> Thank you. 
Bringing the does, does the bass sound like crap out front? <laughs> yes? Aw, oh, shucks. Bass died in the 70s, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> it, it sounds great. One moment, please. Great. I'm going to unplug the bass from the DI if you guys want to mute it. Just, just kidding. <laughs> Imagine if I died. <laughs> oh. It's dark, man. Yeah. It's, it's, weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting less funny. It's <laughs> <laughs> so what happens when you play with your family. You know, you're always being judged. Well, the roles are always evolving. It's always changing. I wouldn't say there's one definitive person that's in charge. You know, everybody has a bit of input. Even people like my mom and dad who aren't technically in the band have input. Okay. My parents were in love with this girlfriend that I had. <clears throat> and now, they're kind of bitches to every other girlfriend that, that uh, comes after. No, no. Because, oh, Dad, you're pretty nice. <laughs> this one on the other hand. <laughs> hey, Shan, it's me. It's about 1 o'clock. I'm just wondering um, what to, if we need to bring for music stands. I'm wondering if we're playing at O'Burns. I want to order another 1,000 CDs of the Christmas CD. Call me. Bye. You come film us at O'Burns tonight. Are you going to play tonight? I think we're all playing tonight. I think. Um, there. You'll have me on the thunder stick. Yeah. Good, Mom. You can come and do an interview with Yvonne, because Yvonne has told me that she's having a bit of a hard time getting you on Yvonne film. Is such a tattletale. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll do the interview now. So, what was it like playing with the band when we were kids? Was it fun? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just be honest. Be honest. How did you feel? I'm the opposite of dad. He loves to be on the camera and I just... Why not? Love to not be on. Why? <laughs> so... <laughs> Was it stressful to have a family band with your husband? Yes. Is it still? <laughs> Is it still? Really well, it's stressful to have a family band with your kids. <laughs> Mom, I'd like you to sit down with Yvonne and do an interview with her. So if you want to do your makeup... <laughs> Better do it now. We'll go to rehearsal and you could do a little half hour interview. It'd be easy, fun. Reminisce about the good old days. Lovely. You do, I love that shirt, it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. She is our agent in Canada, but also she books gigs just sort of all around the world whenever she can. It's really great and people love working with her, but it's also very frustrating because Hi. she's your mom and if things aren't going the way you want them to go, you can't really say you're fired, Mom. Oh, that's great. Are you know, it's a delicate you? balance. What's that? Oh, they're serious players is what they are in, in this scene, and they're no flash in the pan. Everybody knows that. The world launch of Bloom will be in February, which is so strange, because that's two and a half years after we released it in Canada and won the Juno already and everything. When we won the Juno, Bloom wasn't even in stores yet, because we didn't have a distributor for it. So we do things off, like, backwards and <laughs> the, that part of our our lives is still a bit disheveled and not totally clear I think it was a great springboard for them winning, and an unexpected one in some ways. They don't have 
the power manager and they're not associated with the big agent or the big record company. And it spoke about the quality of the music in the end. Ken Rooks, former AD of this festival, had been one for 25 years. But the Madags go back even before me. They held a family dance at the rec center with the McDades. The three of them were very, very young at that time. Jeremiah was only about five, I think, like that, and Shannon was about 13. And that was 2004, I think it was. We booked them again as a group, as the McDades. If I needed a band, I could call on the McDades and know that some magic would happen with them extensively and they don't get the opportunity to play with musicians except at festivals and it can be very magical it's music that you'll never hear again And you look at the depth chart at an Edmonton Folk Music Festival, and it's as good a lineup as you're going to see on the continent. I mean, one of my favorite performances of the last 10 years was seeing the McDade's jam at the Edmonton Folk Music Festival, the workshop. But it doesn't get any better than this in that kind of setting. Growing up at these festivals, because we were playing them every summer for our entire lives, we would meet and play with musicians from around the world and just kind of discover all these sounds. So it was natural for me to use some of those influences in my own music. Shannon and Jeremiah and I all have really different ideas about music. Now we talk about how can we take all those influences and all the things that we love as individuals and make something as a group together. Hey, my facetious advice was, you know, bang off a few pop tunes and, you know, get some kind of, you know, pop notoriety. And, and that was just like a unanimous, like, what? You know? <laughs> they play and write music that they love, and yes, there's a definite connection between everything they did since they were little kids to what they do now. And even now, I mean, they are, they're like, they're beyond alternative, I think, in a way.
Merci beaucoup. Thank you. work ethic to do music at all and make any kind of noise or do any damage you have to have an immense work ethic and you do it because you love it <laughs> we're touring a lot internationally this year we're doing a tour in February all the major cities on the east coast of the states we're doing our first major tour in England for two weeks and we're in the states again in March uh, we're going to Cuba in May Canada and the States and uh, Europe in the summer. There's a tour for Sweden planned in the fall. 